All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today. Um, I'm John Kamen. We've got some folks trickling in here today. Um, we, it looks. I was looking at the registration list today. It looks like we have about 85 folks um, either joining us live today or who, who re registered to request the recording here later on. Um, and as folks trickle in, I'll give a quick introduction to myself and to Wholesome, and, and we can jump off from there. Um, as I do that, if you're up for it, for those of you that are on board now and, and folks trickling in, if you are willing to, in the chat, just um, give a quick a quick comment about where you're calling in from, you know, what organization you work for, and, and maybe if there's anything in particular that you're looking for from today's presentation to make sure that we can, can touch on that, um, please go for it in the chat when you get a second, and we appreciate it. Um, I looked through the registration list a little bit prior to the call today, and it was exciting to see kind of the diversity of organizations that we have jumping on. So there's a lot of folks that are already using Wholesome that maybe want a little refresher or training on how to use it. There's a lot of new organizations jumping on for an introduction, which is exciting to see. Um, <clears throat> and it's across the spectrum. So we've got some summer camps, some sort of like rafting and canoe outfitters, some backcountry outfitters and education organizations. There's some university outdoor programs. I saw a few ranches and and whatnot on there as well. So it's um, really great to see to see that. Um, awesome to see a Missoula organization on here as well. We're based in Missoula, Montana as well. My partner, Grace Brogan, is on the call. Um, she's going to be chiming in here to help as well. And hopefully to give me a little bit of a reprieve on the tail end of a cold. So I'll apologize in advance for my voice being a little bit strained here. Um, I'm feeling Hello. great. Hi, Grace. Feeling great, but my my voice doesn't sound the best, so apologies for that. Um, so quick background about us and about Wholesome, um, and then we'll, we'll jump into sort of the overview for today. Um, so yeah, my name is John Cameron. Grace Brogan is on with me. Grace and I started Wholesome in 2016. Um, so we've been around for a few years, and both of us come from sort of a background in feeding groups, particularly in the outdoors. Um, we were working for organizations where we were trying to feed groups, you know, dealing with all of the challenges that I'm sure you all are aware of and familiar with on a daily basis of like dealing with dietary restrictions, figuring out how to scale recipes to group size, coming up with a good shopping list, uh, making sure we're reducing food waste. And we were wrestling with that in different ways in the past through multiple organizations with, you know, spreadsheets and pen and paper and um, just dealing with the the challenges of it, both in terms of like the cost to the organization in terms of time, the cost of the organization in terms of food waste, but also just like the mental toll of trying to figure figure this out when there's not really um, an easy roadmap. And so we started Wholesome with with the hopes that um, we could sort of address that need in this in in this industry. Um, and it's been uh, growing, and we've been adding features to it uh, left and right since then. So we're on what I guess Grace, year seven now of <clears throat> of wholesome, um, and it's been a lovely journey with you all, and I'm um, excited to welcome some new faces to the community as well. Um, I want to quickly go over a slide, just talking about what we're going to do today. I'll mention um, quickly that today uh, this recording, this webinar is going to be recorded, so we'll send out a copy of this after you know either today or tomorrow likely after we're done so if there's something that we cover that you want to revisit in the future you can just come back and reference this if there's somebody at your team that would really benefit from seeing this that you want to share it with you can you can share it with them as well um so quick overview for today we've talked a little bit about wholesome might do a little bit more about that i wanted to i usually start these webinars by just sharing some recipe ideas there's a um, a platform that, where we have other organizations that are using Wholesome that have kindly offered to share their recipes. And so I wanted to point you towards that before we jump into anything else. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is I'll share my screen and do a really quick overview of kind of like the bare bones of Wholesome in the most simple state. We've really designed Wholesome to be um, flexible. So if you just need a simple tool to crank out shopping lists, it can be a really simple tool. If you need some more advanced features to really dial it in and deal with the nuances of your business, 
um, we can turn on some features and go there. So what I'm going to do is kind of demo the, the basic features first so you get a sense of how this all comes together. And then um, the second half will be focusing sort of on the more advanced features, particularly focusing on dietary restrictions, because I know that that's one of the hardest parts of this work. And then also jumping into some of the, the little bells and whistles that we have in here, including some new ones that we rolled out a few months ago, as well as um, a new set of features that is not quite ready uh, for showtime, but I, I have it um, pulled up on the other screen so I can show you kind of what to expect. It's some exciting um, new ways of, of parsing the data for you. So more on that to come. And then obviously we'll have time for pricing and options. If you have questions as we jump into this, there is the, the comment or Q&A section in chat. You're welcome to just drop questions into the chat there. Um, I can, if you'd rather just chat, just shoot me, shoot us a note and I can unmute you. Um, otherwise, questions in the chat are totally fine. And Grace is going to help by monitoring the chat and Q&A and um, interrupting me where needed to kind of take it from there. Um, so that's kind of the plan for today. Grace, is there anything that you wanted to add? Does that cover it pretty well? I think that covers it really well. Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, let's jump in with recipe ideas real fast. <clears throat> so I'm going to just kind of be pulling this um, slide deck back and forth. I usually start here because it's a really great resource that we have with Wholesome that you are welcome to use, even if you decide that Wholesome isn't a good fit for you. Um, and so over the years of using Wholesome with all of these organizations that have jumped on board, many of them have offered up their list of recipes for you to use. You can access it at any time from the bottom here, recipe collections, or if you are a Wholesome user, you'll find it here as well on the main dashboard. And what this is really is a list of of different recipes that organizations have contributed over the years. You can filter them down by the meal category and then the list of companies that have offered their um, that have offered their their recipes is available here as well. So you can jump on and take a look to just um, get a sense of what you're looking for. And if any of these look promising to you <clears throat> and you really want to pull it into your own account, if you have an account that's active you can um, save that recipe into your own account and it'll walk you through sort of a process of merging those ingredients into the ones that you're already using in your existing recipes. So I did want to start there just as a great resource that like even in transition, even if you decide wholesome is not right for you, you can come here and just get some good ideas for, um, for some options that you can use for your groups. So that's um, where I wanted to start. From there, I would love to just give you a quick overview of Wholesome's kind of core functionality to give you a sense of, of how it works and how the pieces come together. If you are already using Wholesome, a lot, a lot of this will be review. So we're just going to spend, you know, five or 10 minutes going over the, the, the core components, and then we'll get into some of the more advanced features in a minute. And we'll have um, time for questions in between as well. <clears throat> so this is Wholesome. It's an online platform. Um, accessed primarily from your browser. <clears throat> what we're looking at here is the dashboard. And where you'll spend most of your time is up here on the top, is recipes, ingredients, and meal plans. And I'll give you a quick glimpse into each one of these steps. Um, but the main idea here <clears throat> is that you'll build out your recipes. That is, here's the different meals that we're gonna, we could you know, conceivably serve to our groups. As you do that, it's gonna automatically generate a list of ingredients. And this will be a long list of all of the ingredients that you might use in your, uh, that might show up on your shopping list because they're used in one recipe or another. <clears throat> and this is sort of an optional step. It lets you define some more details about the ingredient. So what's the store or vendor that we purchase it from? What's, you know, an estimate for what it costs in general? Do we want to capture any brands or notes for the purchaser about the, you know, the size of the package or the, the type of the ingredient that you really want the person to purchase um, or to take note of um, and, and other information about that. So you'll do these two pieces up front, getting sort of your recipes and ingredients dialed in. And then the fun part is here in the meal plans. So this is really where we <clears throat> have our groups. So this is where we can say, all right, I've got a group of 15 people for five days. 
here are the meals I'm going to serve, here are the dietary restrictions. This is where it kind of pulls everything together to give you your shopping list, your packing list, and all that. So let's take a quick look at each of those. I will. <clears throat> yeah. Could I just add? I will just say um, once your recipes are in there, once you've kind of gotten set up, um, they're there and that work, all, uh, it's important work up front, but then it's there. So um, over the lifetime of your experience with Wholesome, John, if you wouldn't mind just clicking back to that dashboard, um, you would be spending the majority of your time in the meal plan section because you've got the bulk of your recipes in there um, once you you spend that time to really kind of establish what that base is. Um, and that's uh, just just one way to, to kind of think about it. You're always welcome to add recipes, adjust recipes, ingredients. You can um, always be coming back to those. But to kind of think of the fact that um, you're kind of importing uh, uh, your favorite recipes, inputting them, typing them up, getting them detailed, right like you like them. Uh, but once that's done, that's uh, primarily work that's behind you. And um, it's adjusting different um, menus at group sizes is what happens most regularly moving forward uh, as you look through your season, if that makes any sense. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks, Grace. <clears throat> um, yeah, so let me jump in here. Let's, with that in mind, run through kind of a quick demo of each of these components. So for recipes, this is, when you start, this will be blank. So it's it's intended for you to really build out the recipes that you plan to use on your groups specifically. This is a demo account that I have with a bunch of, um, of sample recipes in here. <clears throat> and there are basically three ways to add recipes. One is to create them manually, which is usually what I recommend when you're getting started, especially if you already have a sort of established set of recipes that you're using for your groups. The second is um, an AI tool that I'll, I'll demo here later in the call that'll kind of help you draft a first draft of a recipe. And the third is what I showed you already, which is to import them from those collections of other organizations, um, recipes that are being shared. So let's just take a look quickly at what it looks like. I'm gonna jump into this bagels and cream cheese recipe. <clears throat> and what we can see here is we've got the name of the recipe, the serving size of this recipe, <clears throat> and then the ingredients that will feed that serving size. It's important to remember that the serving size here, I put 10, this recipe is for 10 people, but this is gonna be scaled up and scaled down later. So if you have a group of 20 later on, this will double. You know, If you've got 15, it'll increase it by 50%. So the important thing is to make sort of a standard recipe that makes sense to you for a standard group size. Um, and then you can it'll, it'll grow and shrink from there. And we can add ingredients to this. We can define the name of it. You'll notice that as I start typing, it'll search for various different ingredients that are being used in other recipes. Um, we can choose from different units and unit types. Like, is it a weight? Is it a volume? Is it a whole um, unit right here? <laughs> So I've got bagels and cream cheese. This is a really simple recipe. Um, you can define costs here as well. One thing I do want to call attention to here because it's a really helpful tool and we'll jump into this a little bit more in uh, a minute, but is you can define substitutes for this as well. So we can say um, for bagels, I'm going to define a substitute and say for bagels, if someone has a wheat or gluten intolerance, we are going to set up a substitute rule for gluten-free bagels. And we're gonna define this as if it's gonna substitute it for the whole group. But in the end, what will end up happening is we'll define how many people don't do wheat or gluten in a specific group. And you'll see this in a minute, it'll bring the right amount of gluten-free bagels, the right amount of normal bagels. We can do the same for cream cheese here, the substitute for peanut butter and so on. So that's, um, that's sort of the core part of building the recipe. We can define the dietary restrictions that are in there. <clears throat> draft some instructions. So if you've got cooks or guides or instructors that you send this out with, you can give them some pointers on how to prepare this meal. And then you can categorize it as well into a meal category or, you know, some custom tags if you wanted to um, organize this in a different way. So that's, that's kind of the recipe piece there. <clears throat> You'll spend some time building that out. And um, 
making this sort of representative of everything that you might serve to your groups. I'm going to jump ahead now once we've got our recipes in there and take a look at our ingredients. So this is a list of the ingredients. This is, as I mentioned, it's automatically generated. So as you build the recipes, this ingredient list is going to be automatically generated. So we'll, we'll, you know, as you add more recipes, it will add more ingredients to your list. As you remove them, it will remove um, ingredients from the list. <clears throat> and this is sort of a place for you to add some notes. There's, you know, instructions that you might want to send out to the person purchasing it. You can define what store and what department this is typically purchased from. The idea here is that when we finally generate that shopping list, we want it to be sorted by store, be able to break it down by department. We want to be able to see, you know, which meals um, is this bacon being served in, that sort of thing um, here. And if you have notes for the purchaser or for the packing team, then you can, you know, carry those through as well. It's also a place where you can um, define some costs for these, you know, so we can say for bagels, we purchase them by the dozen and they're $2.50. It's really intended to just give you sort of a ballpark estimate of what a specific meal costs, of what a shopping list should add up to ballpark um, and, and keep your costs in control in that way. In um, the second half of the, the webinar today, I, I'm gonna demo a new feature that we're gonna roll out hopefully in the next two or three weeks that will really open up some more options on this ingredient page for you to keep track of your brand, um, to convert between units, to track specific items um, in terms of like uh, URLs where you purchase it or a specific item number, that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll be sharing some more of that here in, uh, in a few minutes. So that is recipes and ingredients. The last step here is the meal plan. So this is where it comes together um, in terms of building um, a, a plan for your group. So I'm going to start with, uh, a, let me jump back real fast. On the left here, we've got some folders to keep things organized. And on the right are the various groups that we have going out. <clears throat> I'm going to start by making a new one. And we'll just call this like webinar example. I'm going to say this is for uh, we'll say 15 people. You can do that by appetite size if you want to. And then we'll define the dietary restrictions. So in this group, we can imagine, you know, five of those 15 don't do um, wheat, two don't do pork, maybe one doesn't do dairy. And we can really define the, the group um, dietary restrictions here. This is going to interface with those rules that we set up in the in the recipe. So if we had defined the substitute for bagels, with wheat or gluten, it should um, translate here to bring those gluten-free bagels in that case. And then the final step here is to build out your recipe plan. So let's say we've got you know, a five-day uh, group planned. We've got our breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. And on the left are these recipes that we have <clears throat> that we built in that first step. So I can just start pulling these over and really building out a nice recipe or a nice meal plan for us. We can do multiple um, recipes per category. Um, we can relabel these columns if you'd rather do this in a different order or you have you know appetizer and then dinner. Um, John, what do those exclamation points mean? Yeah, um, you'll notice these little exclamation points. This is sort of calling out that, hey, somebody in your group has a dietary restriction that might conflict with some ingredient in this recipe. So if you haven't accommodated it yet with one of those rules, you know, you might want to choose a different meal. Um, yeah, there's a few ways to do that too. We can, we can also just hide them. We can get rid of anything with wheat or gluten. We can get rid of anything with eggs to just hide recipes completely in that way or narrow the list down to really show us just our breakfast options. Um, so I'll, I'll add a few more on here just so we get a good set of options. We'll do some P, P and J here. You'll see the number increasing here. This will show you the number of times that meal is being served to make sure we don't, you know, overdo it. Um, I'll maybe throw a few more on here and call it good. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our meal plan set up. This is what we're going to eat on this for this group. The last part here is saying here are all the the meals that we added. We are assuming that all 15 people 
are eating everything. If that's not true for some reason, because you've got some people joining late, got some people leaving early, or maybe you're serving two different meal options to half the group, we can scale these back and say, all right, only 10 people are having that and five people are having that. And you can really dial it in to make sure that you're not bringing food for 15 people for every meal if 15 people aren't going to be eating it. <clears throat> and this is where we end up. So this is the final meal plan. There's a few ways to view it. You can look at it here on the screen. Um, there is a, an iPhone and Android app where we can view the, view the finished meal plan for shopping and packing pur purposes, or we can view it in Excel. Um, I often jump to the PDF first. And this is where we can see the full list of everything that we need to bring for this trip. You know, so we've got, um, you know, three cups of olive oil. You can see what meals they're, they're in. So here's the eggs, you know, and the uh, various quantities for each recipe that, that call for eggs. You'll notice that it's sorted by store and by department so that if you've got multiple vendors you're purchasing from, you can kind of run through this list pretty fast. We've got a few other columns that we can add to this, um, and then you can sort of customize it to, you know, remove these metric ones or remove the cost if that's not helpful for you to see, to simplify this. So here's your full shopping list. From that list, here's a copy of the full calendar plan, along with the number of people eating each meal. <clears throat> and then the last section is going to be the um, actual recipe details. So here's what bagels and cream cheese looks like for 15 people. You'll see the substitutes here, you know, that we've got five gluten-free bagels coming to replace those bagels for the people that don't do gluten. If there's a recipe with instructions, for example, this one, those instructions will come through on this as well. So this can be a really helpful thing to, you know, if you're a field-based organization or whatever, you can send this out in the field with your instructors or guides to help them just define exactly what they need to pull out and then exactly how to cook it. The, um, the spreadsheet is going to be really similar in that it will, let's see if I can get that pulled up. Um, it'll show you the full complete list of what you need to pack and bring. I've got it on the other screen here, let me pull it over. So this is going to be the same same basic idea. You can define the columns that show up here. You know, if you if this is a, the kind of thing where you want to manipulate it, Excel is a great place to do that. And it'll also break down the quantities by day. So this is what we need on day one, on day two, on day three, and so on. So this can be a really helpful um, list that you can pull as well. And then as I mentioned, there is an iPhone and Android app. Um, that you can use to interact with this. It's basically going to show up. It's, me it's meant for shopping and packing. So it'll pull up this list that you can interact with, you know, when you're at the store to sort of check off what it is you've purchased. Um, and that'll stay in sync with the web version of this as well. If you've got multiple people doing the shopping at the same time, that's a good, a good way to do it. So that is me kind of running through this intro to basic meal planning, making recipes, Sorry about that. Making, you know, managing your ingredient list and then um, creating menus and shopping lists. I think this might be a good time to just pause and see if there are questions or comments um, from the folks that have joined to see if um, there's anything I can clarify. If I went through anything too fast, or if you want me to dig deeper into something, I'm happy to here. Otherwise, we can jump into sort of the dietary restrictions and some of the more advanced features here in a second. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, while we give folks a second to think through if they have questions at this point, would you mind hopping back just to that basic dashboard again? And I'm going to reiterate something I already said, but I think it's just kind of helpful to think through what your actual experience with Wholesome will look like. Um, we kind of ran through a lot of information pretty quickly. Um and it's that meal plan and shopping list section where you're dragging and dropping your existing meals um, uh, into your calendar. Um, maybe you already have meal plans set for a certain type of group. So that's already done and you can just do small adjustments to that. Um, and then uh, kind of using that shopping list once that's created that um, for the 
months and years ahead with Wholesome is where you're efficiently uh, able to get all that complex math taken care of. Um, and it's uh, back in the recipes section that when you first come into Wholesome, if you think about a database that you're um, making sure you're putting in the recipes you really like uh, in a really clean way so that from that point on, uh, your database of recipes is just how you like it, can be updated, can be added to, um, but it's there uh, once you get them in there uh, as kind of the base of the database that you're um, editing moving forward. Um, so just, just to kind of give you a sense of like where you're spending your time once you're uh, really digging in. Yeah, great. Thanks, Grace. Um, I see in the Q&A, AJ asked a few questions. Maybe we can tackle some of those. So AJ asked, um, if we want to change the name or measuring style of an ingredient after it's in multiple recipes, how do we do that? Uh, there's a merge ingredients tool that seems powerful. It's already to bring that up to just rename or change the recipes. It's a good question, AJ. So what we're referring, what he's referring to here is on the ingredients page, there might be a situation where you, um, you know, maybe you entered garlic and garlic cloves into this, uh, into different recipes. And so you end up with um, two ingredients that are sort of duplicates. And I, I, I understand your AJ, uh, your question is more about dealing with one ingredient. So we can address that too. Um, so for example, black pepper and black pepper shaker. Maybe we don't want to have these two being separate ingredients. A few weeks ago, we rolled out a merge ingredients tool. And that basically allows us to check these off, open it up. And here we can change um, the name of it to be black pepper. We can change the quantity. We can change the units um, when we clean up this list. So that's just for those of you that aren't familiar with it, a helpful tool that we rolled out a month or two ago to just sort of clean up any duplicates that you have. AJ is asking a question about how can we change the name of a single ingredient or the serving type of it. Um, the name is easy, so you can always change the name here and you can you know, update the name here and then just scroll to the bottom and save those changes. And that should update it on every recipe that it's a part of. If you do need to change the measuring type, so for example, maybe you put it in there as, um, as like cups of black beans, but you wanna change it to canned black beans or something like that. <clears throat> the easiest way is you know, if it's in multiple ingredients, rather than having to go into each one of those, it, the easiest way is actually use this merge tool. We don't have a really clean way of doing it um, at the moment for one single ingredient. So your best bet, um, even though it may not be the most elegant solution, is to sort of artificially create a duplicate and then use that merge tool to combine them into the unit type that you want it to be. So you might add uh, another, you know, sort of throwaway ingredient to a recipe that you would then clean up using that merge tool, define it as cups or define it as cans when you use this merge tool to, um, you know, select the, the unit that you want to, the name that you want to, and then put it into these, um, the recipes as you would see fit. And then if you need be, you can delete that, <clears throat> delete that other redundant recipe or that, uh, redundant ingredient if you don't need it in there anymore. So that, um, hopefully ask, answers your first question. AJ, and then the second question was about more than one dietary substitute for substitute for an ingredient, which is a good segue. So let's jump into um, dietary restrictions as the next sort of topic here. So this is, and I'll try to address your question, AJ, when we um, when we get into that section. Um, so with dietary restrictions, um, this is like the one of the hardest parts, I think, of feeding groups these days because there's so many dietary restrictions, whether it's um, an allergy, a preference, a religious um, reason, um, uh, uh, you know, a certain like um, uh, uh, intolerance or like a, 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 a narrow diet that they're on. Dietary restrictions are growing and becoming more and more challenging to deal with. This slide up here has um, the way that we've come to sort of think about dietary restrictions particularly while using wholesome. And I found it helpful to kind of think about your plan to deal with it in one of these three buckets. 
And so those three strategies are, one is the common denominator. This is usually not a very much of a crowd pleaser, but it's basically saying like, hey, you know, we've got somebody on our trip that is gluten intolerant. We're just going to do a totally gluten-free trip or our group is going to be totally gluten-free. We're not going to deal with substitute meals, substitute ingredients. We're just going to not bring those things. So that's one strategy that I can show you how to deal with if that's something you want to accommodate. That's often the strategy if you've got a severe anaphylactic reaction, you want to just get rid of it from the group entirely. So we, can, we have tools to deal with that. Um, and then these two we've talked about a little bit already, but I'll give a quick review of it. One is meal substitution. So the example here would be, you know, we have somebody, we're going to serve spaghetti and meatballs for dinner, but there's some people that are both gluten-free and vegetarian, and it's just going to be too much of a pain to try to, you know, substitute the pasta and substitute the meat. And we're just going to serve a completely different meal. So we might go with a rice and beans um, meal or something like that. And part of the group is going to eat pasta and the other group is going to eat something, something else. So that's the meal substitution strategy. And then the ingredient substitution strategy is the one that I already showed you a little bit of, which is like that bagel example where we've got a few gluten-free people. We're doing bagels and cream cheese for breakfast. But, you know, for those people that don't do gluten, we're just going to bring a substitute ingredient for those individuals. They can have the same meal. We're just substituting one of the ingredients for them. Um, so a quick reminder here for each of these tools, we've touched on them already. Um, but for the common denominator planning, where we're going to um, remove all, re all, all meals that contain a specific kind of ingredient, <clears throat> we might come into this meal plan. And when we're doing the planning, we can just use this does not contain. So if we want to get rid of all recipes with that contain wheat or gluten, let's get rid of it. If we don't want to do tree nuts, let's get rid of them. And so then what we do is we focus in on a, a set of recipes that meet those dietary restrictions and we can plan without having to deal with substitutions at all. So that's kind of that first strategy is just remove them. The second one we've talked about a little bit already as well, meal substitution. So this would be an example of, let's say we're doing this dinner down here and we're going to do, um, let's find, uh, use this search tool, spaghetti. Oops, I've got it filtered out. Do spaghetti and meatballs here. But for those people that don't do pasta and whatnot, we're going to do um, a rice and beans alternative meal. And we'll add both of these to the meal plan. And then when it comes time to it, to view it down here, this is where we can use this tool. This can come in handy and say, all right, 10 people are doing the spaghetti and meatballs and five are going to do the rice and beans. So this is our strategy to deal with this um, meal substitution so that we get the right quantities for it. <clears throat> and then the final option is that ingredient substitution, which I showed you. Reminder, that is jumping to the recipes and in the recipe, defining a substitute here to say, you know, you know, if somebody doesn't have a wheat or gluten intolerance, we're going to do this. So to your question, AJ, AJ asked, can there be more than one dietary substitute for an ingredient? And um, the, the answer is sort of yes. So the, the, you can check multiple boxes here to say we're going to apply this substitute if someone's allergic to wheat or soy. So maybe there was some, you know, soy in the in the bagel or something like that. This can often be helpful if, if, if it's, you know, an example that comes up occasionally is something like goldfish crackers that has both wheat and dairy in it. And then we're going to provide a substitute if either of those are true. What we can't do, and I'm not sure if this is what you're getting at, is to do multiple substitutes for like, if it's wheat, then let's do this. If it's dairy, then let's do this as sort of alternate paths to take. It's going to treat them. It's going to do one substitute if either of these are true. So that's sort of a, a kind of yes is the answer to your question. Okay, great. I'll pause there for just a second. That's dietary restrictions. I know that was a lot. Um, any questions there that we want to wrestle with right now? as we can keep cruising. And I would just say, yeah, those, those three different paths that John outlined here 
are three ways that over the last seven, eight years we've found are most effective in dealing with this really complicated issue. Um, but if there are specific questions in your um, particular case, uh, we're always available to try to answer those. Um, but for uh, for all of the things we've seen in the last seven or eight years, one of these paths seems to to work in, in most cases, and sometimes it's a combination. Yeah, thanks, Grace. Um, okay, unless there are questions or um, anything I should pause on, let's jump into some of the sort of additional tools that we can optionally turn on with Wholesome. Um, we've got some new ones I wanted to share with you and then some some good standbys that come in handy really often. Um, let's start with some of the new and upcoming features. For those of you that are already familiar with Wholesome, you may not yet have seen um, some of what we rolled out in the last month or two. Um, and then we, I've got an, uh, a few things I can share that we haven't uh, launched live yet. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the AI recipe generation tool. This can be, especially once you've got an established list of recipes, which is usually what I recommend starting with, this can be a really great tool to add new options to your um, recipe. And so what this is going to do is it, um, it sort of automatically drafts a recipe for you based on a prompt that you give it. So I can use an example like Dutch oven lasagna. And this will take a few seconds to load. <clears throat> But basically what it's doing is it's taking a look at the existing recipes that you have, the ingredients that are used in those recipes, and it's going to try to formulate a recipe using the ingredients that you already have wherever possible to make a draft recipe for us. So here's an example of um, Dutch oven lasagna. Um, we can adjust this to meet the needs that we, we have. So you'll see the ones that it's adding. If it says new next to it, it's because this is an ingredient that's not used in any other recipes. All these other ones are used. You might find recipe ingredients that you want to get rid of to say that's, you know, something that we don't want. And then it'll give you instructions as well. You know, full disclaimer that this is sort of a, a new tool. It's not going to be perfect out of the box, but it does do a pretty good job of putting together a draft recipe for you that you can use as sort of a starting point um, rather than having to hand enter each one of these ingredients. So that's one of the cool tools that I wanted to share with you. <clears throat> the other one is one I will drag over here from a different screen is related to ingredients. And so we've had a lot of requests over the years to kind of build this section out. You know, as a reminder, this is a place where you can add notes about the ingredient. What's the store? What's the department? What's the cost? That sort of stuff. But when in reality, when it comes time to go purchase your ingredients, there are a lot of variables that um, might be helpful for you to know. Like, what is the specific brand? What is the specific item number? Um, are we purchasing this unit, this ingredient in like a different unit? So for example, maybe we buy um, we buy rice by the pound at the store, but we serve it in cups in our recipes. So th there's a lot of things that we could do to sort of strengthen the, the list. And I wanted to show you really quickly, I won't get too far into this because it's not quite ready to go, but um, this is just a development account where we've got examples that we're testing and working through. And what you'll see here is the addition of this little info bubble. And what this is gonna do is really open up some additional options for us. So we can specify the brand, the specific brand that we prefer to use. If you're working with a vendor that has an item number, um, you can pull this in so that it's really easy to send along to that vendor to say, here's the specific item that we're looking for. If you're shopping at a physical grocery store that has aisle numbers, you can specify the aisle number so that we can really sort the list by aisle to make this really streamlined. And if you're doing any online purchases um, through vendors, you can link to the specific URL for that item. And then down here, um, we'll put up a, a full dedicated support video for this when it goes live. But this is a way that you can convert between units so that like rice to pounds example I showed you. Or, or I mentioned about rice, you know, maybe we serve it in rice, rice in pound, uh, in cups, but we want to purchase it by the pound. This will help us translate how many cups per pound. Or maybe you buy, you know, maybe you serve pasta noodles by the single box of pasta, 
but when you purchase it, you purchase it by the case. And this is a, a way to say, okay, well, there are you know 50 boxes in that case so that your shopping list will show up in those purchasing units that you need when you go to the store or when you communicate with your vendor. Um, so this tool is coming hopefully in the coming weeks and should really strengthen a lot of the shopping list outputs that you have if that is helpful. Another tool I'm going to show <clears throat> that we find um, really helpful. So first, I'm going to jump to my settings here. For all of these advanced features, um, they're controlled from in here. So you'll see that most of them are off right now. What we've tried to do is really build this in a way that you can optionally turn things on if you find them helpful. And I won't go through each one of these today. We have um, we have support articles for every single one of these features that you can walk through and learn more about if any of them you want to dig into, you know, batch recipes in more detail or whatever, you can do that here. But I did want to highlight a few of them today. Um, one of the ones that people find the most valuable is this in export customization. So I'm going to turn that on really fast. <clears throat> what that'll give us is a few things. One is when I come back to my meal plan, um, I have this export meal plan button. You'll, you'll notice that this has replaced what was the PDF and Excel buttons here. And um, what this gives me is just a little bit more flexibility on my outputs. So maybe I only care about the shopping list. Maybe I'm only going shopping at Costco and we just care about, you know, bulk items. Or maybe it's just for specific dates of that trip. And I can really just focus in and look at a specific shopping list just for Costco bulk items. So that's a really helpful way to sort of narrow the shopping list down to focus on the ones that you care about most if you're visiting multiple vendors. The other thing that'll help us do is in combination with that is maybe we're shopping for multiple trips at the same time, multiple groups at the same time. This pull combined lists is a tool to really pull them together. So if I've got three or four groups going out in the next week and I'm going to do one shopping trip for all of them, this is a great tool to combine all of those ones into one into one list so that you can see the full list that is needed for these three trips. <clears throat> if you're doing it pre-season and these are like template meal plans that don't necessarily have the specifics in there yet, you can also multiply them out to say, I know I'm going to have 15 of these and 12 of these and 10 of these to get a full estimate for the entire season. Um, of trips or groups that you have coming. So for your dry goods or your non-perishables, you can um, really shop for those ahead of time with some accuracy. So that is um, one of the, maybe I'll pause there for, for questions if there's anything coming in. Not seeing anything in the chat or the questions yet, so I'll keep cruising. Um, the rest of these you're welcome to play with as you jump in. We have a two-week trial, and that two-week trial is going to come with access to all of this. So when you jump in, feel free to turn these on, turn them off, and play with them. Um, you can decide you know, what columns show up. You can talk about the labels. We can change the labels of our categories. You can customize your dietary restrictions in here. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can build into it. Um, the, the other features that might be worth highlighting, and I'll, I'll just breeze through these. If anybody wants me to go deeper on this, just mention it in the comments and I'm happy to do it. Ingredient rounding is a helpful tool. If those you might have seen in one of those shopping lists, the like, um, you know, 4.7 jars of peanut butter or something like that. Most organizations can deal with that and just say like, okay, well, that means I need to bring five jars of peanut butter. Um, if that's an awkward um, situation for you, you can turn on ingredient rounding. And what that really does is let you define for each ingredient whether you want um, to round, you know, do we want to round this up or down or to the nearest hole? So you can set rounding rules for to get rid of those decimal points, basically. <clears throat> packing notes. This is packing is a whole other beast. If you're in an industry where packing, like rafting outfitters, where packing um, is just about as hard as shopping is. This is a tool that you can turn on to really define where you're going to pack each look, each ingredient along the way um, so that you can also start to pull inventory lists for each cooler or each dry box or each 
uh, you know, location that you need to pack things. So this this will be added to the recipe, uh, so you can define packing locations across the board. And then the last one um, that might be worth talking about briefly is this batch recipes. Again, I won't spend much time on this. We do have support videos, but this is a really a way to deal with those recipes that scale a little bit differently. So a Dutch oven recipe or like a, a, a lot of baking recipes, breads, cakes, those sorts of things. Um, that's that they don't grow infinitely. So I often think of like a loaf of bread might have a recipe that serves a certain number of people. And as you add more people to that group, you're not going to make an infinitely larger and larger and larger uh, loaf of bread. You'll eventually make two loaves of bread. And so this is a tool that really allows you to scale recipes by um, by doubling rather than scaling them incrementally. I have seen a lot of organizations also use this uh, tool for their staples box. Every Everybody calls this something different, but if you send out um, for your groups a box of you know, a spice kit or a cook kit that always has one bottle of olive oil and always has one salt shaker and always has, you know, this spice mix. Um, this can be a helpful tool for that as well, because that's one of those things that doesn't really like grow and shrink with the number of people on the trip. It's just sort of a fixed amount of ingredients. Um, and so this can be a helpful tool for using, um, for using that as well. Okay, I will pause there and jump to the last part of um, the last part of this, which is the um, the pricing and options, unless there are questions that I should pause for. Grace, looks like we're in good Being shape. None, yeah. Great, no worries. Um, so, pricing and options. This is available here on the pricing tab. So, as I mentioned, you can sign up for the two week trial. There's no credit card or anything needed. You can just sign in and start playing with an account that can be either a test, you know, throwaway account that you never need again, or you can start building towards your eventual real account. And then whenever you're ready to, that can be upgraded to one of these uh, plans. You can choose to do monthly or annual. Um, you know, monthly, if you choose to go this route, you can at any point pause the account and you'll, you might lose access temporarily, but you can um you know when that lapses but then it'll be there for you when you start it up again you'll still have access to your recipes and meal plans um, or you can go to the annual and have access all year round and then there's various different levels i talked about most of these um most of these features if there's any you want me to dig into further you can to kind of get a sense of uh, you know what's available at each level so that that is that. Uh, that pause, John, that you were talking about, um, just to speak a little bit more to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, some folks are working seasonally and they choose to pause um, you know, when they're off season, but a lot of folks have found that it is helpful to have it for um, uh, beyond this season, whether it's for the full year or um, a few months at the end or at the beginning of this season, just to be um, refining and updating and preparing. Um, so just a note about how some people approach it, um, whether they want access for the full year or during their peak season or a little bit um, on either end. And I guess I, I would just add uh, on pricing, we um, have heard feedback from a lot of our existing customers that it pays for itself uh, within weeks of uh, based on staff time and um uh and you know food costs so uh it's it's something that uh, we've put some thought in and we want to make it as accessible as possible um but we have really uh put a lot of energy toward making this really valuable to uh your business and your day-to-day -day experience so um just a couple of thoughts on how some folks have used that. It looks like we do have some questions coming in. Um, is it possible to display recipe specific quantities in the shopping list when exporting to Excel? So that I'm assuming is referring to um, what we see on the PDF here where we see the recipe specific quantities like this. 
And the question is, can that be done in Excel as well? And I don't believe that it's pulled through into um, into this into the spreadsheet because we've got it accessible here on the day by day. So you can see recipe specific quantities. Um, I guess mostly recipe specific quantities. These are more day specific quantities here on the spreadsheet. So I think the short answer is no, not really um, accessible here. But I will say, you know, we're a super small organization, um, literally a mom and pop organization. And so this kind of idea is the one that I always take note of, AJ, um, to like keep a running tab of things that we'd like to add in the future. That's how we've built Wholesome in the features that I've just been demoing. So I'll make a note of it to see if it's something that we can add in the future. Thanks for that. Any other questions? on features, on um, how it works on existing customer base, anything like that. Right. Well, unless there are any last minute questions, um, just wanted to take a moment to thank you all for coming. I know, um, I know it's a, a lot to throw at you. Um, here midweek, but I appreciate you taking the time to sit through it. I will send out a recording of this afterwards. Um, so you're welcome to revisit it. And then in the meantime, I did, I wanted to share my, my contact information that's up here. You're welcome to reach out anytime to, you know, ask a specific question, or if you want to set up a time for a demo with your team specifically, feel free to, to reach out here. And then finally, just, yeah, um, you know, spread the word. We're a small organization trying to um, help organizations that are out there that are struggling with this stuff. And um, we really do rely on word of word of mouth as the primary way that we we get out there from other folks that are happily using Wholesome to, to streamline their menu planning. So if you've seen something that you think would help another organization, please do us a favor and reach out to them, connect them with us. And if you haven't already, if you're new to Wholesome, sign up for that two-week trial at wholesome.app and um, get things going. And hopefully we can connect in the future to to, to get everything running smoothly yeah. for you all. I would just add on along the lines of questions, um, over the last couple of years, we've really um, made our resources uh, that cover questions, that cover functionality, uh, very available on our website so that um, you can... Uh, uh, learn kind of some of the ins and outs of this very powerful tool that we've developed over the years with your feedback and your help or the, the feedback and help of our customers over all these years. So we have a very, very robust, um, John's showing it now, yeah. uh, section where you can come and learn if you do have questions. So uh, it's mom and pop. We're here to help, but there's also a lot of places where you can go and find really detailed information uh, as well. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate that you taking the time to join us today. And um, don't hesitate to reach out if, um, if you need some support in the future and we'll be in touch.